Hey, hi, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess and today I'm actually not filming a G video. Today I wanted to do some recommendations for one of my favorite tropes, which is found family. Oh my god. Yes, we're going with tiny top knot. Just we're going with it. Some of my little baby twists <laughs> can't fit in the top knot, but we're going to go with it. So all of the books that I have are fantasy, which is is there a found family in other books that aren't fantasy? Probably in sci-fi, but I haven't read enough or I'm not remembering right now sci-fi books that have this trope in it. And once I finish filming, because that's what happens, I'm going to remember books that I forgot. So hopefully down the road, there'll be another one. But these were just a few that I was looking at and I was like, you know what? Those all have one of my favorite tropes in it. Why not throw together a recommendations video? So first I'll start with a common one that you all have heard of and that is Six of Crows. And I'm gonna show you my beautiful collector edition wait 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 oh wait 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 oh wait 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 oh wait 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 okay sorry six of crows by lee bardugo very popular fantasy story <clears throat> almost everybody and their mama knows about it but six of crows literally found family and also i feel like found family kind of works with that whole like ragtag group of people come together it kind of works Either way, I love both of them. But Six of Crows is following these six very different, very different people who live in the city of Ketterdam. For the two of you who don't know, Six of Crows and then Crooked Kingdom come after the Shadow and Bone trilogy. It's maybe a year or two afterwards in the timeline and it's set in Ketterdam. So it is very like Amsterdam, but like really dirty, grittier. Kaz is like the leader of this crew. They all have their individual traits that kind of bring to the team um, to scheme and steal and all of these things that they do. And Six of Crows is following them as they um, get together to perform this heist. So it's a high story, but they all took, all come together and they just have such different personalities. And this is a multi POV story. I think still to this day, I think Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom are Lee's best books. The character work is mwah. And that's really what you have to go into these books for if you haven't read them yet, because a lot of people don't love the plot. I mean, I liked the plot, but like the characters are what make this story because like I said, they're all so unique and so well written. Their voices are so distinct. You get like flashbacks of things that they've been through in their childhood that make them who they are in the present. They all, you know, various traumas and, and backstories that influence them and how they move through the world. And it is just amazing. I have not read them or have not reread them in a while. And I'm nervous because I don't want it to ruin it. But I did try to listen to the audio and I don't like the narrator. So I think I just need to reread them because I love them. I still haven't watched the show. But if you have not yet, I think you should give Six of Crows a try. Another one that's almost kind of a high story and I'm too lazy to take it out of his box so you're gonna see the whole box set <laughs> is Mistborn first era trilogy by Brandon Sanderson so it starts with the final empire then the well of ascension and then the hero of ages so if you were following me on Instagram when I was reading these I really loved the first one the second one was kind of slow but like I understood it was really bridging things together I feel like on a reread I might love it and then the third one in my opinion is one of the best endings to a series to a trilogy i've ever read bawling loved it amazing so mistborn the series setup is essentially imagine if like the hero failed the bad guy won so the lord ruler was a bad guy and thousands of years ago when they tried to defeat him they lost and so <laughs> he's in control and everything in this city that they're in luthadel i think it is is just like dreary it's literally ashy because it's just like ashes falling from the sky there's a lot of people who are poor and starving and there's slums and all of these things right so you have another group of people who come together you have vin who's a street urchin who doesn't know that she's a misborn and then she figures that out in this world a misborn is a person who can use all of the metals um, that they ingest to have all of the powers. But most people just have one power. So like if you ingest, I can't even think of them right now. If you ingest copper, then you have a lot of strength. If you ingest tin, then like your hearing is increased, right? Usually people only have one, but Mistborns who are very few and far between have all of them. So Vin's a Mistborn. 
she meets Kelsier, who's another Mistborn who has been through some serious shit in his life and is now trying to, you know, kind of be the, the voice of the rebellion. And again, all these different distinct personalities coming together for a cause to try to get something in order to hopefully make the world a better place and I loved it. Again, I think these characters are really great. Some people may disagree with me, but I loved most of them in this story, even though the main character, Vin, is not my favorite, but then there's people like Seizad, Tinsoon. I personally love Kelsier, so any who's. Also, this is just, you can read this as a standalone. There is Mistborn Era 2, which I also love, that Brandon is working on the fourth book in that series but you could just read this this is a complete story and you could stop here you know if you're just interested in reading this trilogy so again if you have not read Mistborn Era 1 I think you should obviously if you like what I described <laughs> okay another one more fantasy well it's all fantasy okay The Faithful and the Fallen by John Gwynn this is the first book Malice I don't know if you can see it in the camera but let me see if I can oh my god they're all so chunky the second one is Valor. Ruin, my personal fave of the series. And then Wrath. So this is a quartet. It's finished, another bit of it. Malice, I think, is perfect for fans of Game of Thrones because it has some similar tropes, but it's different and it's finished, okay? So in Malice, we have a lot of POVs. I will say that's my only complaint in this series is there are so many characters, so many POVs, but luckily there's like a character glossary you can reference in the front, which is so helpful, especially if you take time in between the books. But this is very much um, good versus evil. So we have Corbin, who in this world is like coming up onto his like trial that's gonna determine if he becomes a man. Um, and you know, he lives with his parents, he has a sister. There's um, like his sword master who like is teaching him to fight. He also finds like this wolf cub they don't want him to keep and names her Storm and he and she is his companion and it makes me think of Jon Snow and Ghost but anyway there are a lot of similarities in that like he seems to be the chosen one for the good side and then there's a bad side there's really there's almost like an angel race a demonic race and a prophecy that basically says like he's the coming he's like the good um coming that needs to like save the world from these demons so things happen in the town that he lives in and they have to go on a journey to try to basically save the day and on this journey he meets various people they encounter giants and there's other people from other villages that end up joining them people from different causes and so there's a group so there's a big old group of the good side sometimes they're together sometimes they're split apart sometimes they reunite stuff like that different they're in different places of course fighting against the bad guys so again found family it warms my heart so much although john Gwynn does kill people he killed some of my faves it hurt my feelings a lot of times but again a great found family and also the story is so good he's really good at writing action like i said he's not afraid to kill people which is a good and a bad thing if you love an animal companion storm and more enter later into the story like i said there's giants and prophecies and magical objects and friendship brother sister relationship parent relationship magic oh mm, so good so very good I recommend. Now, is this one kind of pushing it? Maybe, but it's my video, so I'm gonna do what I want. Mine, this ugly copy I have though, but His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman. I'm still looking to try to decide what editions I want. I really want the Folio Society editions. Thanks a lot, Mariness. But they're so expensive, but I want them. But anyway, focus, focus. So His Dark Materials. I don't know if this is classified as middle grade or young adult. Either way, I loved it. So we have Lyra and Will who come from two different worlds that are similar. So Lyra is living in her own version of London and Will is in another one. And so in Lyra's world, like magic exists. In Will's, it really doesn't or it's not something that's like as common and prevalent. And they un end up finding each other because they're on the run from various things that have happened in their lives in their own respective Londons. Lyra's parents died when she was younger and she has like this uncle who 
doesn't really raise her because he's always off traveling and studying and things and so she lives at Oxford and she's raised by scholars essentially but then this lady comes around who's really sketchy kids start disappearing and so Lyra's on the run from her and then in Will's life he lives with his mother who is sick who he's always trying to take care of but these people come to his house one night and they try they're like looking for him they're looking for somebody and they try to kill him and he ends up escaping and he sends his mom to stay with somebody and so he's on the run they meet and they're trying to figure out how the stories are related what they're going to do who can they help it's an adventure i personally love it there's talking polar bears there's witches again there's magic there's regular humans there's a lots of talk i think some people don't like the overall conversation about religion and maybe they found it really like anti-christianity or anti-religion it's really anti like the institution of the church itself so like organized religion which i thought those themes were fascinating but together lyra and will they at various points meet different people are traveling with different people so they do have like that found family element then but even without them, them two together are like a family and they also have their demons because in Lyra's world, you have a demon who is an animal and is basically like your soul outside of your body. And in Will's world, you have that, but it's not visible, but eventually he does get one. And so they're like a little family and it's so precious. And the last book made me cry. Actually the second two, because it's just so sweet and the ending was so like bittersweet and heartbreaking. But anyway, I think this is a great one. Um, it's three books. In the US, the first one is The Golden Compass, but in the UK, it's The Northern Lights or Northern Lights. And then The Subtle Knife, The Amber Spyglass. Some people don't like it, but I loved it. Then I have Vicious by V.E. Schwab. So this was my first Schwab work. <laughs> Sounded really weird. <laughs> that I read. And I loved it. I love Vicious. I love Vicious. I love Vicious. <laughs> so this is an adult novel and it follows Victor, or the story starts off with Victor and Eli who are like buddies in college, they're really smart. They're both trying to figure out how to become an EO, which are like extraordinary. So like a normal person, but who has powers. So they figure out that people who do have these powers all experience like a near death or like technically they die, they came back experience. So they're like always pushing each other, basically trying to kill each other and then bring the other one back from the brink so that hopefully they can get these powers. And then something happens with them and they fall out and then the story skips to like, I don't know, 10 or 15 years in the present when they're out of college and, and way older and Victor is getting out of prison, but you don't know what happened and what he was doing. And so you follow them and you figure out what happened between them, why they are no longer friends and what landed him in prison. So in the course of the story, Victor, whose perspective you get more of, I think, finds this young girl named Sydney who has her own powers, this dude named Mitch and a dog. <laughs> and they're this real odd group working together to find Eli and hash out things and there's not much more i can say without spoiling it but it was really interesting and i really loved this as a standalone there is a second one and i think there's going to be a third but i've never finished the second one but i love this because it kind of questions what actually is like good versus evil because victor does not great things but he's like doing them in the name of trying to work towards something better but then there's also Eli who thinks what he's doing is a good thing and his is arguably worse than Victor's bad stuff you know what I'm saying I don't know I thought it was really interesting conversation and I really loved it because it's not like some straightforward hero Victor has a lot of issues he's done a lot of fucked up shit he continues to do fucked up shit but it's like less fucked up than Eli Hey, I loved it. <laughs> and finally, for this video, if you didn't expect to see this one in here, have you been watching my channel? But it is the house in the Cerulean Sea. Okay. <laughs> the house in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. At this point, if you have watched one video of mine, 
I'm sure you're sick of me talking about this book, but that's too damn bad, okay? The House in the Cerulean Sea came out last year. It was literally like it was destined for us to hug us when we really needed it amongst 2020 and we still need it. This book follows Linus. He's a social worker. In this world though, there are children who have magical powers. So he's essentially is a social worker at this place for extraordinary youth is kind of like the agency where he goes and he checks in these homes because they're essentially in like foster homes uh, for extraordinary youth because a lot of people don't keep them so he his job is to go and expect make sure everything is running well make sure the children aren't a danger to society and to themselves write up reports hands it into his bosses it's very drab mundane job that he doesn't really love but he gets this assignment where he has to go to this house that's out by the beach which has always been a dream of his and they not only want him to check in on the children but also the man in charge named arthur parnassus and they're like you might want to read up on these files before you go out there and he's like oh no i don't need to but he should have because when he gets there he is in for a surprise the kids are varying shades of different you have Lucifer, but he goes by Lucy, and there's Theodore, and there's Chauncey, and they're like, oh. the Now while there's a romance, a male-male romance, which is so sweet, so precious, and I loved it, the children. The children are the delight, the joy, the shining star in this book. They're so precious. And this book just really talks about acceptance and it's okay to be different. And we shouldn't judge people by outward appearances and, and we should give people a chance and we should love them. And It's just so positive. It's very light, soft fantasy, but in the best way possible. I need this to be a Pixar movie ASAP this is amazing but yeah i mean it's the definition of found family they're all living in this home together while linus is visiting to do his report his inspection or investigation or whatever but <sighs> i want to be a part of this family i love them so much Chauncey. literally even if you don't read fantasy I think you would love this because it's just perfect. So check it out. <laughs> so that was my recommendations for fantasy books with found family. Some of them were adult, some were YA. I don't know if I pointed that out. Oops, my bad. But I'll have them linked below if you want to check any of them out. And if you have any other recommendations that I didn't include in this video for books with found family, please let me know because Maybe I've read them and I can include them in the next one or I would like to read more because I honestly just, mm, it just gives me all the feels. Found family just makes my heart throb. It's great. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe, check out my description. Like I said, I'll have the books linked. I have links to different things going on worldwide. Please, please look at these links to check out things that are happening because so much is going on and I know we can't keep up with it all, but we can do our best and if you say you're not educated on something, take the time, take five, 10 minutes. A lot of these things don't take deep investigation, deep research in to, to know what's wrong and to know what's happening and be able to find places to donate um, if you are able to or links and resources to retweet. So please, please check out what's happening, especially what's happening in Palestine. COVID is still really affecting India and so many other countries things that are happening in Colombia just please if you see it take a minute to read about it retweet it awareness is important in all these situations so check out those links and I also have links to my socials and ways to support my channel but thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one bye